Welcome back, friends. Today I'm deviating from my normal content of farts, boogers, and free psychic energy readings to deliver a JavaScript programming tutorial that I'm calling Color Adjust Theming. With what you learn in this video, you can easily earn up to $5 billion a year if you apply it in the right way. Even people that apply it the wrong way can easily earn up to $3 million per minute. And people that don't learn how to do it at all can still earn up to $50 per second. First thing we'll do is take a look at the working example. That way you can determine whether or not you want to learn this type of programming. I'm also going to make a playlist and add more videos to this topic because there are many variations and approaches to this. Some of you may also have questions and requests after watching this video and I will answer those in subsequent videos. But either way, I will surely show different approaches even without being prompted to by viewers. This topic can go 10 videos deep or more and we'll see how it plays out. So normally when you're on a modern website that has a lot of user friendliness and they like to give their users customization options, you'll see in the settings, you'll see dark and light theme. And we've already covered tutorials of how you can easily switch out a style sheet using JavaScript from a light style sheet to a dark style sheet. That way the user can have a dark version of your application or a light version of your application with the click of a button. But in this type of programming, we're going to take it a step further to where the user can adjust the color they want, the saturation, and the brightness. So if you just want light and dark, they can go from light to dark pretty easily with the brightness. But as they adjust, you'll see they can change the color and the brightness and the saturation. And they can also reset it to its default value and have the default theme. But if they play with the color, let's say if I want a red version of the application I'm using, I can also saturate it to make it a deeper red or a dull red. And then play with the brightness to get it exactly the way I want it to look. And they can even adjust it to match the color of the browser they're using if it happens to be a website. If it happens to be an application, then it's going to take up the whole screen anyway. and You won't have a browser window that the application is running in. But if it happens to be a website, they can make the theme, the color, match the browser exactly, which usually looks something like this for dark versions of browsers nowadays. Maybe something like that would probably match most browser windows in their dark theme. When you saturate it more, you can see the blue color come out. But usually it's like a really dull and dark blue that they use for browsers. You can make it a very deep purple for the G++ community. But like I said, there's so many variations to this that you can even add things in here like changed text color. You can have controls in here for changing the text color as well. But in this video, we're not going to get into that, but I will get into that in subsequent videos. That way, if they want to make it really bright, then we can have the text also change automatically according to the brightness setting. And using this approach, you won't have to have multiple style sheets. You just have your normal style sheet and all of your elements or one specific element can be adjusted using these sliders. Okay, now we're going to jump into the code to show how this very simple example works and how easy it is to accomplish something like this. So here you can see my example index file is very basic. All it has is a head element and then a body element. And your index file would have all the bells and whistles that go on top of that. So I just put the head and the body just to keep it nice and lean and simple for the tutorial's sake. So if you look in the head element, we have a link to a styles.css file, which is your CSS document. And then we also have a link to a JavaScript file that's named color adjust. And that's where the color adjust function resides. And here's all the normal stuff that you would have in your body, a header, the main element. And then I have a div for the panel, which has those sliders in it that adjust the color and theme. Then we have a footer. Now here in the panel one div, 
you'll see there's just a heading that says color adjust. And then where these spans are, these are just labels for the three sliders. We have color, saturation, and brightness. And then under each of those labels, we have an input with the type of range slider, one for the hue, one for the saturation, and one for the lightness. Because we're going to be adjusting the HSL color coding within JavaScript. And as many of you know, the HSL or HSLA color coding is how you can color things in your programming, sort of like RGBA or hexadecimal colors, hex colors. And those aren't the only color codes you can use. It goes way beyond that in CSS. It goes beyond RGB, hex codes, and HSL. There's other color coding mechanisms that we'll discuss in other videos. Now for the hue, I gave it a min, the minimum value of zero, maximum value of 360, and then the starting value 180 so that it's right in the middle of the slider, the knob is right in the middle of the slider because the hue setting is a zero to 360 degrees setting. And you can also make it a negative 180 to positive 180 setting if you wanted to, which will change where the colors are on the slider. Then for the saturation slider, I gave it a minimum zero and maximum of 100, and then a default value, starting value of 50, to have the knob directly in the middle. And they each have an ID. ID of hue, ID of sat for saturation, and ID of LIG for lighting or lightness. And then for the lightness range slider, I gave it a minimum of zero, maximum of 50, and a default value of 25 to have the knob right in the middle. Now the lightness can go brighter than 50. I believe it can go all the way up to 100. So if you wanted to set it to where it would get very, very bright to where it's white, you could do that. But I wanted to put a, a leash or a limit on how bright this application could get because there's only white text in it. And like I said, I'll show you in subsequent videos in this playlist how you can change the text color. Maybe you can up this max value all the way to 100 for the lightness. But if you want to get it to where it's really bright, the whole theme, then you'll definitely want to change the text color because once you get it really bright, they won't be able to see the white text anymore. So that's why I limited it, the max to 50. So on each one of those range sliders, the color adjust function in JavaScript is set to fire off when any three of those are adjusted. Now, finally, we have our little control buttons. One says save color, which at the moment does nothing. And then color reset, which does something in this application. It'll set it back to its original dark mode of a dark gray. That way they can just reset it to your default theming. And I'll show you how that function works in just a moment. Now with the save button to save color, that will require the use of cookies. Or if you have people that are logged in members, you can also save their color choice, their HSL values to a database table. But I believe most people would just use cookies and you can store their color value. That way, when they come back to your application and as they go page to page or section to section in your application, their color choice that they set will remain and it won't just get lost. And I'll show that in a subsequent video of how you can create a cookie to save their color choice, which is very easy to do. Okay, so now you've seen 100% of the code that's within the example index.html file. And on my site where I'm implementing this, this div ID panel one, I made a drop down window that comes down from the header. Instead of being static on the page like it is now, it's in a header template that when the user clicks the little cog wheel or the cog icon, it makes the settings panel come down and they can click color adjust and get to these sliders that way. That way it's available on every single page or every single section of your application.
And I believe I have a tutorial for that kind of menu system or drop down windows. So if you guys have any questions about how that might be made, I think I already have a video that might exist for that already. So if you have a question in the comments, I'll put the link to that video for you. So now there's only two more little bits of code, the style.css file and the coloradjust.js file, which are also both very simple. Okay, now we're gonna hop over to the JavaScript to take a nice juicy bite out of the real meat of this tutorial, coloradjust.js. So the coloradjust function, which we explained runs when any one of those sliders is adjusted at all. This function will execute. Now the first thing we do is get a constant variable, which this can also be let if you wanted, since it is something that does change a lot, but within this scope, of this code block, it can be a constant. So the h variable is equal to document dot query selector, which you could also use uh, get element by ID here, and then just remove the pound sign to get to the hue ID. But I just use query selector that way, because in subsequent tutorials for this topic, I'm going to use query selector to get a class of elements which will be a list of elements, multiple elements that will be in an array that then we can loop over to change their color. That way you don't have to target anything by ID. If you give everything that you want color changed, that class name. So query selector for the hue ID, then we say dot value of the slider, and then we concatenate the string degrees to that. And I'll explain that in just a moment. Then for the saturation, which is a variable named S, we do the same thing for the sat slider. And that we concatenate a percentage symbol to the value of the slider. Then for the lightness variable, we do a similar thing as we did for the saturation. Just concatenate a percent symbol to the value of the slider. And then finally, we concatenate all three of those together to create an HSL value that we then change the background color of our document to using the HSL function, which in CSS, I'll put a comment here that'll show you what it normally look like if you apply it statically in CSS. So we have HSL color function we have 150 degrees, for instance, 30% for the saturation, 60% for the lightness. So 150 degrees would be your hue value. That's why we concatenate DEG to that value, and then we concatenate percentage symbols onto the other two. And that gives you your hue, saturation, and lightness values that you apply here in your JavaScript which makes it dynamic as opposed to static CSS. And after speaking with Peter the other day about React, he said React allows you to dynamically create elements and adjust their CSS and all of those things using just JavaScript where you're not working with CSS or HTML so much and you're just in the JavaScript language creating all of these things. And what that is, is the document object model, the DOM. And in JavaScript, you can do everything. You can manipulate all of HTML and CSS using the JavaScript DOM. So these things that you're seeing, the examples I'm showing of the HTML and the CSS could be 100% in JavaScript. And you can create these elements through JavaScript, and then they get rendered to the page. And you can also adjust those elements, kind of like this code here, how we're dynamically adjusting the background color. Now for the color reset function, it's very simple. We just set our background color for the document back to its original dark gray, or almost black. And then we put the hue, saturation, and lightness sliders back to the knob being in the middle, 
and you can set those to any values you want to make the knob be anywhere you want. So let's show that again real quick. When I press reset, it goes back to the default. Now we just have to take a look at the style sheet. So styles.css. So you can see everything is very basic and normal, except for a few things that are a break away from the norm a little bit, depending on your design tastes, your design preferences. And I have it to where the color of the text is almost white, but it has a slightly transparent setting to it. I'm using RGBA and the A stands for alpha. And the alpha allows you to set transparency, the transparency value. So I wanted that text right here. Let me show you again, right here. All of this text is slightly transparent. That way, when I change the color, the text takes on the color just a little bit. You can see the text is slightly purple here and here. And that's why you see that setting the way it is here for the color of the text. The background color is just a static dark gray. Then for the header, the main, and the footer, all three are set to have alpha settings to where they'll let that background setting because in color adjust all we're doing is changing the document's body element background color so that's the only thing we're adjusting in javascript but every element is going to take on that hue and that color theme and you do that in css by making everything slightly transparent to whatever level that you like. So if this is set to zero alpha, that means it's gonna be fully transparent. If it's set to 0.9 or a higher value, that means it's gonna be barely transparent. And that's how I achieve the effect very easily. And that what's, that's what makes the JavaScript be very slim is because of the design preference I went for in my CSS file for my application. And the rest of these attributes, I don't have to explain to you guys, because if you don't happen to know what they do, then you can easily go and research them on your own time. I won't sit here and waste your time going through, you know, min height or padding and font size. And you guys, most of you know what all of those things do. The only thing I had to explain is the reasoning for making everything slightly transparent. Okay, that's about it. Now see if you can pull it off and make yourself $50 trillion a year. And like I said, I'm going to be making more tutorial videos along this topic. And I'll make a special separated playlist out of it. That way we can put every variation and every different kind of approach. And also answer viewer questions and requests in that playlist. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you soon. Mwah. Love you.